think I saw it once yeah. before. Second. Yeah. Who else played it? And was it successful? Is it wasn't question. successful. It was not. Okay. It was not successful. The, f the only tinker that I remember seeing since the big patch where he got massively nerfed was when IG picked him and they started stacking Ancients. And then I'm pretty sure someone on the team told Faith, you can't farm Ancients with March anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then he ran back to his jungle and started, <laughs> started just stacking the big camp instead. So Anyways, the game That is did not go well. Yeah, the game is going to start. Yeah. Oh. QO. QO, yeah. That sounds like an MVP thing. Uh, the game is going to start. There's lots of questions. Can Navi take this 2 all? Will EG party like it's 6.69? We're going to see that with Sunspan and Cinderen. Guys, it's all yours. Thank you, Bruno. Let's go over the lineups before we get any deeper into this game, Mr. Cinderwin. We have Sumail playing the Tinker. Really, Bruno? 6.69? Really? Okay. Universe <laughs> on the Phoenix. PPD playing his back. patented tree and protector. I haven't seen that in a while. Fear on the Troll Warlord, and last but not least, Aoi on his hero as well. The the Chen riding a, I don't know what the heck that mount is. Is that like a Warthog? Oh, that's that's not a Warthog. It's a, that's like a panther. It's a Lokuthi Barding. Okay. Oh, I see. Gotta look that up later. Okay, for Navi, we've got Funic playing as X as expected. Goblack will be playing as Warlock. We've got Dendi on the one of his trademark games. heroes, the Queen of Pain in mid. Vanscore will be playing Rubik like 90% of the other games this tournament. <laughs> and finally, Hvost will be playing Juggernaut like 90% of the other games this tournament that Juggernaut was not banned against Navi. Indeed. So very much um, comfort zone for Navi. Very unusual for EG. I'm especially looking at the Tinker. And I want to point out before we really get started on this, I feel like I'm seeing a pattern in what the, the young stars, so to speak, play. Excalibur, Arteezy, Sumail. They play Storm, they play Shadowfiend, and they play Tinker. All three of them. Heroes, especially Storm and Tinker, I want to say, are heroes that you can really impress with. They're heroes you can single-handedly dominate pub and league games with, and can put you in a good light. It seems right. like the, it, it's pretty interesting to see. Also, Invoker. Apart from uh, apart from Arteezy. Love you, Arteezy, but stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, bottom lane is going to be the Juggernaut and Rubik versus the offlane Phoenix. What do you think about this lane? They have the Telekinesis, Blade Fury, but of course Icarus Dive is all well, the escape mechanism for the Phoenix. So I think they have a decent time in the offlane without a third member coming to gank. Yeah, this is not too bad. So one of the weaknesses of Phoenix is the zero armor, but Rubik's standard attack is pretty weak. So as long as he doesn't get caught in mid Icar Ic Icarus Dive by... Uh by the telekinesis, he should have an okay time here and get some decent levels. He's gonna have those fire spirits ready to go and probably one of the more annoying spells in the game. So Mail is gonna be mid versus Dendi, and how do you play Tinker if you can't <laughs> march in the machines ancients? You just stack the jungle. I mean how less effective is that in the grand scheme of things? I wanna s I don't know, I can't give you a number on like I want percentage. a number. Damn. Okay. Let's 40. Oh, he's taking Dendi. a lot of damage mid. Yeah. This is one way of winning the lane for the Tinker first off. Chen can help, then Chen can stack the jungle. And yeah, you absolutely need to stack the jungle. That's pretty much mandatory. Uh, it's obviously a lot slower than if you were to do Ancients, but not to the point where Tinker can't really get anything, right? You can still get Boots of Travel at around the 9 minute mark in the solo mid, or maybe even earlier if you get a kill, or, or if you just get really good farm. So, I think Sumail is going to be okay. And we'll, I mean, EG are picking it in, a li in an, it's not an elimination match, but, a ma or elimination game rather. If they lose this game, they get knocked down. So this should be one of their absolute best strategies they're pulling out here. So this, I think this is a pocket strat and we might get surprised by how powerful they can be together. Yeah, I mean, Tinker's one of those heroes. He snowballs like very little other, others in the game. Uh, I wanted to quickly talk about the Warlock. I know the, the panel talked about it a bit. In our experience casting together, the percentage, <laughs> the winning percentage of a support warlock just feels like sub 20%. Not to say that's actually going to be the case here. Do you think that this is actually... I think it is sub 20 this tournament. I think it's zero right, and one. Well, that <laughs> doesn't surprise me at all. He's going to take some, or Fear's going to take some damage here from, from Funic on the Axe. But, I mean, Shadow Ward is really good as far as damage over time and heal over time. It's just his lane presence isn't the greatest and he's so item dependent as, a, as an initiator. I want to say the game, for example, okay, so the game Navi lost to Secret, a lot of blame was put on the Warlock pick, but I think they just, they flat out got outplayed. I don't, I think that was a pretty poor example of 
Warlock supports real potential in that game. I guess that's the game that's most memorable. There might have been one or two other games, but... As a support, he's good as a babysitter, like you pointed out. A chaotic Offering can be very powerful, and so can Upheaval. I just think you need to draft it in the right situations, and I think Navi has learned a lot during this tournament about when to pull out their Warlock. So... <laughs> I'm not saying this is the case, but they did have like two seconds to pick. Yeah, and that, I guess that's true. It might have just been a true. desperation type. Oh, let's just get something we're comfortable with. As the Warlock himself takes a lot of damage. Berserker's Call is not going to connect on anybody at this top lane. Uh, but Phonix... I think you're underestimating well it, Lucy. Well, I, I would love to see him do well, just because then we'd see the hero more often. Because it's not easy to build a team around the core Warlock to make sure that he survives in lane and gets the items that he needs. If you can get away with being support, that'd be great for the hero so, itself. So in other words, you and Bruno should like a team for I should make a team for people that love to see Warlock. It's such a fun hero and It is a fun hero. You and then LD so? says Warlock Schmorlock, and then we have two camps <laughs> already. So. Well Tinker I'm sure a lot of people are sick and tired of Tinker from TI four, but I think it's been long enough that they kinda wanna see him back. He's a flashy long. hero. He was just borderline broken before. Yeah. Now it's like it's gonna be actually very impressive and entertaining to see a good tinker performance because you just you know in the back of your head that if he does pull off a good performance, it's because he plays extremely well, not because the hero just flat out is right. insane right now. So that's always enjoyable whenever You know what I would love to do right now while there's no action is count the nerfs made to Tinker in the one patch. So March of the Machines does not go through magic immunity, meaning yep. you can't well, not only for Ancients, but through BKB, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't work. And Mud Golems. That's, that's kind of like two. God damn All right, Golems. sure. We'll just count that as one. One okay. major nerf. Okay. We have Ethereal Blade. has a slower projectile, so the yep. dragon's not quite as effective. That's two. In addition, I don't know if we... I guess we count this as a third, but Ethereal Blade doesn't apply to yourself, which was huge for survivability. Yep, that, I'm down with that as a nerf for Tinker, yeah. Okay, and what am I missing? You're missing... There's one more. Dagon nerf. costs more mana. Okay. For the Ethereal Blade Dagon build. Um, we might have a gank at top lane. Owie. Uh oh. Well, Black might get first blood. It looks like it's going to be a really easy one. All right, you're right. Be. Support Warlock. <laughs> 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 oh, this, of course, <sighs> very early on. I, I don't know. Okay. It's true, though. That's a gank that Venge would have definitely <laughs> escaped. <laughs> the level two swap for Vengeful Spirit for the win. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, how many more nerfs do we have? Uh, I think. I think that might be it. There could be one more that I I'm like forgetting. I feel like we might be missing one. We might be missing one. Uh, yeah. Galbox is going to TP mid and heal his teammate with... Oh, never mind. The Shadow Word is not being used, in fact. He's just going to bottle up. Okay. All right, so question for you. Do you think Tinker was over-nerfed? Like, was it too much? Or was it actually necessary to uh, nerf him? Well, we're going to have Telekinesis. going to hold those horses there, Cinderwin. Icarus I'm holding on to my horses. It's going to force the Blade Fury. Man score one Fire Spirit away from dying. Not going to connect. Oh, oh it does. He does pop the health pot a little bit before that, though. I think the universe. I'm surprised he let that dive go through. Or that he cut it halfway, rather. If he followed through with the dive, I think he kills the Rubik there and gets away. He awesome. has the Haste awesome. Rune. He had Living Armor. And Juggernaut was level 6, so uncharacteristic Berserker misplay. Ball on Fear at top lane. You're seeing the Shadow Word. There's the upheaval. Ridiculous slow onto Fear. Funic. Continuing to aggress, does not have Calling Blade unfortunately, but this might be enough damage. A Leech Seed is being applied to Phonic, and as a result, Fear will actually get away. So I'll reserve, <laughs> I'll tell you if Tinker was over nerfed after this game. <laughs> 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 but it, on paper, I think it was extremely drastic. Um, okay, T. Okay. We've barely seen him since. Nerfed was on a scale from 1 to Morphling after TI2. Right. How high would you put it? Uh, 9. Okay, so Morphling after TI2 yeah, was 50, that was so that was really low. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Why did you just assume that was 10? Why did you ask first? All right, Tinker minus one. I should have said that. Damn it. Well, that would have been a ring. Working towards those boosted trial. That's at the point. I mean, if you're Navi, do you want to... I mean, I shouldn't say do you want to. Are they going to try to gank him before those boosted travel come up? I think that's a huge... I mean... That's yes. the easiest point in this game that you're going to get a gank off on. But ganking Tinker can actually be pretty tricky once he has reached this point already. You rather want to gank him very early on, but at this point he can push out the wave and farm it without risking too much. He's just using level 4 march, he's checking out the runes, he can of course transition into the jungle if there's some stacks for him, but the reason for all that, in all, th that's the beauty of having a Chen on your team. Oh, we're going to have some initiation. Funnick gets the Berserker's call on PPD. Both Funnick and Gobble just running away. The whirling axes are going to connect up both. They're going to force... Gawblack to die. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna force it down his throat. There's a sonic wave, not gonna be enough to take out some mail. Denny taking a lot of damage, gonna fall in the end. So a two for nothing in two separate lanes. EG.
looking really good right God, now. God, that's my new favorite <laughs> saying. <laughs> get bursted and get forced to die. <laughs> Force him to die. <laughs> oh, that's so good. We need. We have a lot of sh merchandise we can do here. Yep. We can work it out in time. But no, what I was going to say is uh, ganking Tinker is actually quite tricky because with Chen, having a jungle hero in general that can gank and being off the map completely, you never know what lane he's going to be going to. So everybody from Navi has to play somewhat passive unless they want to overextend or have the possibility of overextending. Well, Sumail is it's looking pretty good. Nine Did minutes. Did you say smell? Sumail. Okay. Did you say smell? No, Did you, you think I s you said smell? No, you s Whatever. Well, the mud golems, unfortunately, will not be touched by the new play by play games. caster, please. LD, <laughs> LD, come back. Sumail. I take you back. It's about 1500 gold. I regret everything I said, David. Working very slowly but surely on those boots of travel. How dare you? All right, so speaking words. of smell, yeah. you. Okay. Do you really want to get into this right now? I don't think so. I don't think you, Do you want to fight. Want to <laughs> I'm pretty sure you don't want to get into this. Bunnik's going to find BBD. Oh, Berserker's called not going to Sumail is also pretty. Has that Close value to being level forced to die in the mid lane. Of battle hunger. You like how I'm trying to transition this back to a normal cast, but you keep roping me back. You're holding me back, Cinderwind. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, now we can talk about something. Okay, so let's have a look at Sumail. He is 200 gold away from Boots of Travel with a bottle and soul ring. So has 58 CS in that mid lane. He's out farming Dendi by 21 CS. Well, he was in the jungle as well. Still. Okay, so I think he got about... 10 or 15 in the jungle, and he surrendered, I don't know how many mid lane creeps for that. Let's like, say one wave. Yeah, probably. Four or five or something like that. So all in all, maybe he's ahead by 10 or 15 in, in lane creeps. That's still a really big lead, so yep. Mel is doing very well. Well, Funnick has a haste, looking for Chen, but it's going to be forced out, not finding anything to his liking. Has a bottle, Tranquils, 1400 gold. Is this going to be a fast blink? As Battle Hunger is applied to PPD. This might be a solo kill. Berserker's call before PPD can get off anything. But fear is there to strike fear into Funnick's heart. And back he goes. All right. We've seen Blink Dagger first a lot. We've seen Vanguard first a lot. I I almost never, and tell me how you feel, almost always for the Blink first. Yeah, me too. But I've, I've been... My perspective has been changed quite a bit by the games I've seen in this tournament, where there's been some games where the Vanguard just really makes X difficult to bring down. For this game in particular though, he's playing against a Tinker who... I mean, Vanguard, sure, you get the health from the Vitality Booster, but it's the damage block that really gives the item value. Tinker doesn't care about your damage block. He's gonna laser rocket and put March. And it's very easy to get Marches on X because he will commit into the middle of the fight. So I think for that, the Blink Dagger Burst is a better choice in this game. Uh, in addition to, there's also other magic damage choices. Uh, Phoenix does quite a bit of magic damage too. There's Test of Faith and also Trolls Whirling Axis in both forms. So, yeah. I'm with you. Blink is better this time around. Dendi getting super annoyed by Sumail, who just keeps rocketing and lasering his face over and over. And of course, with those boosts of travel, it's just going to get more annoying by the minute. Band score, and the most bottom lane. Dragonlet does have the Omni Slash available in top lane. Upheaval is going to try to slow the initiation, but there's the stun from the Centaur. That is a lot of damage. And of course, Sumail can just TP anywhere he wants. Goblax even going to go down. They're going to get two out of this engagement and perhaps push even further. That's another thing we didn't really talk about. Boots of travel. We talked about it last game with the Hawk. We didn't really. Nothing came to fruition. But Radiance being able to just TP wherever Chen is is huge. Especially with the new Chen, who can send his creeps to other lanes and not really commit them and just port them back to himself. That's a, yeah, that's a good point. Can you. You could make a pretty cool play with that, where it looks like you're TPing bottom, and right before you start TPing, Chen pulls his creeps to himself, so it looks like you're going to end up bottom, and then you end up next to Chen instead. That's like a 360 no-scope for Chen. Absolutely. A hero you would never expect that's to get any no-scope that's, that's as close to a no-scope for Chen as you can get. Yeah, pretty much. That's Although the initiation with Centaur, st centaur stuns is pretty legit, too. The blink. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Well, Kalos has the Mask of Madness going for the casual Yasha in all likelihood. And Dendi did pick off a couple Chen creeps at the top lane, but Sumail, look at this, how aggressive he's being. He's just in the enemy jungle, doesn't give a crap about anything right now. Oh, top lane. And the real question. Oh, Dendi. that's a really good setup he for gets EG. Knocked, gets netted, there's the Supernova as well. Dendi cannot get out of that overgrowth, and down he goes. Free tier 1 as well going the way of EG. Really great play from Aoi, getting the troll trap into the centaur stop. The universe wants some more. Negative earn charge. There's a rocket. Look how much damage they do. This is ridiculous. Two dead in the blink of an eye. 
And they can just continue to that tier 2 if they really want. Man, I think a lot of people were skeptical about this EG draft. So far, they had no reason to be. It's really working out well for them. 7-0. They take the top tier one, the first tower of the game, as a matter of fact, 14 minutes in, or 13 and a half. Well, I'm still more skeptical about the... The Tinker? The support Warlock oh. than anything. Yeah. Yeah, the Tinker was not ganked. Yeah, so that's the problem, right? I if mean, Tinker has a great game and does well, it's you always come back to, well... <laughs> well look at it was against the support lineup. Warlock, What right? exactly is their gank potential in the mid lane against Sumail? Like we were talking about, that'd be great to game them. Rubik Quap is Warlock. pretty decent. Yeah, Rubik Quap is okay. Warlock is literally useless. He's just there to for moral support, <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> I want to say, oh, uh, Dendi, he oh, has he really bashed. long cooldown on a blink. Oh, oh right boy. Right doing fear. Solo cut 8 to 0 for EG. That's pretty greedy of Dendi, I think, to blink the rune when he doesn't have vision of the rune. Or he did of the rune itself, but not above it. And he blinks in to get it, and then easy kill for fear. Oh, I, I think... initiates onto universe. That's going to be their first kill of the game. 8 to 1. Of course, Phoenix does a ton of damage in the meantime. Havost sitting at a low HP pool at the moment. So to get back on, uh, get back to the thing, uh, the Tinker thing. Oh wait, the thinker, wait, wait. Oh, uh, it's not enough. Oh. Dyer's bottom tower wow. Is under um, attack. Closer than I thought. To get back to the Tinker thing, it's it's also difficult to gank any mid laner that has living armor. I think they just. Like, EG's draft was set up around Tinker feeling safe in the mid lane even without needing actual support. Mm -hmm. He Nobody need to, needed to move for him. He just won his lane handily with Living Armor. At the same time, the top lane went very well for them. And Same with Phoenix. Phoenix can also really do a lot with Living Armor. So it seems like the... I want to say the core part of this draft for EG is the Triant. And if they didn't have the Triant, they might have not taken it in this direction at all. How often did he use it on Tinker mid? Quite a few times, because Dendi was harassing him with the Shadow Strike, and he just kept healing him up. Didn't care about it, got good farm as a result. Dendi is a player who will quite often in the mid lane uh, prioritize harassing the opponent over farming. So if he does, if he makes that kind of play, which is what but you'll naturally do... Yeah. He denies no matter what. <laughs> sure. Uh, but you'll naturally, when you're playing Queen of Pain, you'll try to win your lane. You don't, you don't feel satisfied if you're getting a draw with Queen of Pain in the mid lane in general. So he, his instinct is to play aggressively into the Tinker, but he can't really get any sort of a victory with the Triant helping him out all the time. And now Battle EG, trance. Yeah, this is a rogue. So good. And then the summons of an entire zoo for Aoi. And that was Rose shortly after. Aegis for Fear, who has a Helm of the Dominator and 2,000 gold on top of that. Juggernaut still working on his Yasha. It might be coming on the Curry right now, actually. Should yeah. be with that it's amount of farm. Full Should Yasha. be Yasha. Yep. What does he transition towards now? Does he go for a little bit of mobility with a Blink Dagger or damage? Or does he finish your favorite SNY? Attack. I don't, I would not recommend, well, I mean, th this is being brought up do. like you every single, <laughs> okay, so if you're ahead, <laughs> if you're ahead and it fits your strategy, I think SNY can be a great choice. They're behind, they need more bang for their buck. This is not good enough for Kovos to get it in SNY. Of course, Juggernaut with Mask of Madness can kind of do a lot of damage anyway. I think oh, he needs to be more ambitious. This is a decent call. On AUI, it's going to be a lot of damage. Universe is there for more support as well. Here's the Omni Slash. Reefs are tanking and a lot. Here comes the Sonic Wave, going to connect on two, along with the Chaotic Offering. Fear at a very low HP pool. And the, so, the, the Supernova is placed as well. Overgrowth on top of it. Look at the damage between the two. And Gallblack, it's going to be the third death for Navi. All they lose is the troll, but that's the Aegis intact. And we talked, or the, I think the panel was talking a bit about the Overgrowth and Supernova combination. We saw it in full force right there. We've seen it twice, I think, this game, right? Or was that the first time they pulled off? No, I think it happened top lane. It too. happened top lane too, yeah. There was a little bit of separation, but uh, this one was like right on top of it. Has Dendi been really thinking about this? Well, Sonic Wave is down. His blink has about 10,000 range now. But away he goes. He does have the double damage. So. Cool. Weapus just checking. Make sure I'm right on the 10,000 range. Appreciate that. Shout out to Weapus. Best cameraman EU. And NA. Radiant NA for now. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... I think a big part of the of the mistake there for Navi is the blink call from Funic only catching the chance. If he does not catch the creeps there, he does not do enough damage. He does not disable the centaur stomp and the ensnare. And Aoi gets all of it off. He immediately stops the, the Juggernaut, and then he snares and forces out the Omni Slash, which is really subpar in that situation. Navi just can't fight right now. They have Three no two. chance at all fighting into March with their lineup. Do you think, um, like, well, okay, what do you go for if you're Juggernaut? Do you just finish the Manta to take off the blind for both laser and whirling axes, or... And actually, you can get out of Overgrowth as well. You have a lot of ways... Man Manta is really good. Manta. 
both between Manta and Blade Fury, he can take out pretty much anything yeah. on a consistent basis. I agree with Manta. It is one level of Blade Fury. We've seen this a lot, obviously. Um, the biggest thing that I look for is to, oh, as we have initiation top, Berserker's call into PPD, Battle Hunger applied as well. Dendi helping his teammate. PPD he might live. He has no detection. Guys, and away he goes, and Sumail blinking in. Not going to be enough to take out Funic as Telkinesis trying to trying to catch more Navi members. But a lot was used. A lot of time wasted. It looks like some males build. Blink into Bloodstone is going to be completed in just a few hundred Holy gold. Holy cow. That is insane. It's a really good time. Would you consider that a nerf, the Bloodstone recipe being changed? Or the way you build it for Tinker? So that you don't have Sol Ring anymore? Yeah, because you always want Sol Ring on that hero. Yeah, like I he think... He might just buy one on top of that now. A lot of Tinkers actually, exactly, get a Sol Ring on top of... Uh, so we can add that to the nerf <laughs> for Tinker. I don't know if that's a nerf, though, because that means he gets the Bloodstone it's earlier. A faster, true. So it, it kind of depends on what your priorities are. If you're... I want to say, if you're snowballing, it's a buff, because then you could quickly get more uh, Bloodstone charges. But if you're behind, it might be a nerf in some cases. Mm. Anyway, he... Still looking to just maximize his farm and put more pressure in the bot lane while Navi are grouping up top. PPD is in a really good position to get an overgrowth. Is up now just came up, scouting things out. Afraid that there might be some sentries there, which there are not at the current moment of time. Funic trying Berserker's to call. call was, I'm not sure what that was on. He was trying to get PPD in case he was next to him. Just oh, I see. random, random attempt. Speaking of your stone. favorite item, SNY, Fear has it. Yeah, I was going to mention that. You're good friends with Fear, so I'm sure you approve. Oh, oh Owie. He's going to get caught out and just brought down in a heartbeat. Okay. Living okay, Living there. Armor. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous. Calling Blaze is going to use the finish mop. Here comes Universe with the Supernova. The egg's going to oh have. Watch God. out. All Black and Company. Vanscore is going to go down to the March of the Machines. Here comes the Chaotic Harvick. Finally used, but Navi is already getting cleaned up by EG and Hole. Chen didn't even get off the hand of God at all, but it doesn't matter in this fight. It's the last remaining survivors for Navi are the Juggernaut of Oath and Dendi, Queen of Pain. And there's... Yeah, you're right. Oh, Omni Slash. So Mail doesn't have anything like a Ghost Scepter yet. He's going to fall. That's a big kill for Chavos. That's the biggest kill he could get. That's his Manta. So Mail had a Mega Kill. They're already very far behind. I think this goal yields... Oh, this kill yields... Yeah, 1,100 gold. Wow. The good news for Sumail is... Obviously, the Blood Zone will bring it back pretty much now. And he didn't really have any gold since he just spent it all. But he did get that uh, Soul Ring like he talked. Do they just keep it in... I guess he doesn't need to keep it in base now, but later on when he gets a fuller inventory, yeah, you can keep it in your stash for the most part. Drag drop soul ring and bottle, of course, for yeah. efficiency. Man. I'm just really positively impressed by this overgrowth supernova. I mean, on paper, it's it obviously looks amazing, but a lot of combos do. They're just pulling it off and showcasing it very well in this game, Evil Geniuses. And oh. Does Dendy see corner. that, yep. by the way? Okay. I think so. Yeah, he does. So he knows PPD is there. There's the finished SNY. Basically a big F you to Cinderin from Fear himself. It's still an okay timing and they're ahead. <laughs> so Yeah, I don't I, I kinda like it on troll overall. Yeah. He's one of the best SNY carriers. Bottom lane. Uh oh. So Mael. He's getting he's out. He's in the trees. He's good to go. PPD. Perhaps looking for an overgrowth, but nobody quite near enough for him to pull it off quite yet. Um, Universe though, on the Phoenix with a Midas now, so I believe, how long did he pick that up? It's been a couple minutes, probably. Yeah, I think he got it at minute 18. Oh, they're going to get Telkinesis top lane onto Sumail. He gets the lane and just destroys Vanscore. Never mind! Sonic Wave is used to counter that completely. And Rubik lives with, like, 2 HP. Or Sumail just like suicided, Tinker, I mean. by the way. What's that? He just suicided. He Bloodstone. Oh, okay. Actually, the Sonic Wave was wasted, but I think they cast it at the same time, so Dendi didn't have time to cancel and react on that, but... He used the Sonic Wave to try to force out the Bloodstone, but Sumail didn't have that kill on Rubik anyway. Speaking of Dendi, working towards his Orchid, not the timing he's hoping for, however. As no, that is clean up really late. Dyer's he's died three times and hasn't found a single kill. Very uncharacteristic for Dendi on Quap. Even in games Navi lose, he tends to at least get a couple of kills on the Qua. He just Dyer's hasn't been able to find any opening. Funic's going to get stuck in between a bunch of creeps. <laughs> Gets the Battle Hunger off, though. Owie is working towards Aghanim Scepter. I believe that changes his ult to be about a 30 second cooldown. Snail top. Funic got Funic faded Funic in. Funic He's in trouble now. He has two TP supports for EG. Do they have enough to finish him off? The Blade Mill's going to do nothing in this case. The answer is yes. Thanks for answering my question, Cinderwind. No problem. 
want to point out, uh, did you mention the, the warding? I sure didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that warding, what the? That's for Tinker, man. They are really covering that area. They have two wards that are... They overlap, too. They overlap a lot. I, I don't think this is worth it, actually. That's kind of overkill. I, one of the wards can be very valuable, but putting two there... <laughs> effectively, they're covering that side of the map really well, <laughs> and they have no vision <laughs> elsewhere. So, well, they better get a kill off that, else that's just going to turn out to be a huge waste. What do you think about Ags on Chen? I think it's really good you because of the granite. Theoretically, core. use it twice in one fight, and obviously, yeah. Heals, yeah. I think Take if it wasn't for the granite golem, no one would get it. Really? Yeah. I feel like it's still. It's still good, good, but that's how it used to be, and people pretty rarely got eggs. Then they would get mech Maybe into like four staff and sometimes more of a hex. Luxury, I guess. That's it's true. it's just way more valuable now. You can heal your team health, and your creeps to full health. And you can port your creeps seconds. around and split push with them, so the 30 second cooldown allows you to split push a lot more. It's just all of the changes to Chen have actually buffed his Aghanims a lot. Even though it's... It didn't get changed until the... Oh, Berserker's called blind one on PPD. Looks like this is going to be enough to take him out. TP support though. Universe and company are here. This is the male with the March of the Machines. Double damage on fear. Doesn't look like they want to commit. Because Chaotic Arm, literally every ult in the game is up for Navi at the moment. And EG, not interested. I mean, Supernova is... It's an extremely easy ultimate to counter. But with Overgrowth, that's been the beauty of their strategy so far. Especially with the Juggernaut, it can just pop Mask of Madness. And like you were talking about early game, you were bringing this up with Blade Fury. The attacks in between can be used to take out the, the egg Dyer's as well. Of course, the stun does go through BKB, but... Dyer's something to keep in mind is the Tier 1 tower. Taking some pressure mid. We are still with the double damage. And here come the TPs. Most. End up getting the tower himself. Universe. Dives out. Alright, he gets a little bit scurred. He really wanted that attack. healing ward. He has a blink, by the way. Yeah. Phoenix. I, I like that. Cool. It's so tell me how you. So blink supernova, is that typically what's. Dyer's you want to drop your fire spirits, spirits first, right? But <laughs> the supernova. Or the blink gives him. It reduces the travel time to set up the supernova. And of course, it allows him to make plays like he just did with blink and supernova out. Okay, okay this is very risky, risky now, dude. Funnick getting destroyed, but here comes the sonic wave. Fear at half HP. Funnick gonna be the first to fall in this engagement. Fear will follow soon. It's a one for one AUI. Not able to get off much as he's gonna drop to the deck. Universe gets a beautiful supernova stun overall. So Mail on the cliff with Martian Machines gonna help his teammates get out of the buyback from Troll Warlord. He's in tow as well. Dendi stuck in the wrong place at the wrong time. And of all things, Universe gets to kill with Sunray onto Rubik. And now the pressure is on Navi as Goblin attempting to TP out. It's not going to happen. The last remaining survivor for Navi is Khabos on the Juggernaut. This is going to be a free rush. It did cost the Chen death and a Troll Warlord buyback. That actually looked fairly okay for Navi until Dendi blinked into double march yeah, that and tried to fight. That that looked really uncharacteristic. There, were, there was no easy kill to get. He blinked into two or three heroes standing in march. That's just flat out a misplay from Dendi there. And I'm not going to lie. I have not seen a Phoenix this farm this fast. This is really well done by Universe. He has... All he needs is a Mystic Staff to finish off the Shivas, and we've talked about his blink earn Midas. And he's 16 years old. That's that's Sumail in a year. I know. It's his, it's like his big brother. They really do look <laughs> similar. It's pretty awesome. Hopefully he's being a just good like role model. Just like Fear is Arteezy's dad. <laughs> All one big NA family. Yeah, Arteezy just needs to grow a beard, but I don't think he's old enough yet to quite get there. <laughs> He'll get there, don't worry. I can't imagine Arteezy with a beard. Oh would, god. He'd I probably have one of those like goatees. I am already be. imagining Fear's beard photoshopped onto Arteezy's face. Alright, let's, I let's get see those that. tweets here, guys. That's amazing. A nice beard on Arteezy. Let's get some variations as well. Ice 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 is yellow hair oh, as beard okay. on Arteezy. I'm really disappointed in Ice Ice Ice, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a fan. Of but only guy. only with his hair, not with his oh, play, just his, obviously. Just his hair. Yeah. If might I was need his the team manager, I'd make him shave his head, and then he'd be good to go. Might need the Bruno fashion overhaul. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Uh, who was that that just had a Yules? Was that the Sumail ticker? I, I think so. so, yeah. All right, what do you think about that pickup this game? Oh, it's Sumail. Yeah. So he builds Yules on everyone. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter what here. Wait, he doesn't. Not Brewmaster <coughs> or Storm. That's true. So Half on ev hero. every <laughs> hero apart from... Most of his heroes. There's a 50% chance he'll pick up Yules. <laughs> okay, so the the nice thing about Yules, obviously, is if he can predict, for example, the Golem drop or the Blink call from Axe, he can get himself out. It's a nice way of resetting so you can Blink 
in in the chaos of a fight and just buy time more importantly than anything if he can just if he can get the cell fuels off in the middle of the fight it gives time for overgrowth supernova and for chen even a chen sent back before it he can use himself and get back to base it's a very nice hybrid item good both aggressively and defensively okay, how does rage work on rubik does he, he turn can, to melee he's casting it right now <laughs> like, oh, i wonder how this works <laughs> <laughs> all right I love how he looks is when this, he does that. Is this up there with the most useless skills you can get? <laughs> it's on pretty big. <laughs> oh, okay, he gets 40 move speed. That's true. He That's gets true. bash. He I gets don't know. A little if, bit of extra HP. Right? I don't know if the bash works on Rubik. Maybe it does. Because well, he has the melee form, but he has range. No, so, yeah, he gets ranged. Uh, melee. I mean, he gets melee. Yeah. When he triggers it, don't so he can walk can in get and extra bash. HP in melee. <laughs> yeah, he gets a little bit of health armor. Okay, it's not the most useless then, but it's, <laughs> it's really, really I really want to see him walk in and bash fear. <laughs> that would be amazing. And then die. Slap him with a staff later. and then die, yeah. Well, he's going to steal it again. Oh, nice. Just wants to refresh that, you know, since there's zero cooldown on it. Upheaval being popped by Goblet. Going to try to delay the push for EG. Because we have some TP support now from Queen of Pain, Dendi. Sonic Wave is up. Everything except for the spell steal is up, man. Really so, oh, Juggernaut's actually going to get an Abyssal Blade. Monik's going to initiate onto Fear, going to try to bring him back into the base. Damage being done by Universe to Kaisen. Just the bit. He will get anything up. He gets healed at the last second. Overgrowth to follow. Kabot's just stuck spinning in place. Sonic Wave is going to connect on two or three heroes. And Na'Vi looks like there's personally on the run. They come back in as a Supernova. It's just flipping them just from the side. Kabot's is going to end up getting stunned by this. And all likely will go to the right clicks of Fear. Down he goes. Remember, Fear still has the Aegis in tow. And Universe looks like he's going to be the first to die in this engagement. Or is he? Funnick's going to be the one next one. That's a two for nothing so far as the aggression continues. Fear still with the Aegis. They can't do anything against him. As Vanscore drops to the deck thanks to the heat sinking missiles. And so Mail forces everybody else for Navi back into the fountain. This is going to be a Rax. A Rax! Yeah, that was actually a really good attempt from Navi. It was a good counter offering. Great silence onto the Phoenix. Exactly what they needed to do there. Uh, got a lot of damage out, couldn't really bring down Fear, and he did have the Aegis, so it would have been hard in any case, but I think the biggest loss in that fight is that they don't get Omni Slash off. That might have made a difference, although Aoi did a good job keeping his, his creeps in the vicinity of, of Fear, so it might have been a pretty underwhelming one, but they needed to try it. Because at this well, point... I'm not sure, does he have Manta right now? Yeah. So he popped Manta, and then he spun, and then Overgrowth was used. Yeah, I, I think he might also not have had Mana. It's pretty expensive to use Manta and Mask. If you use the Abyssal too, that could be his mana pool gone and spin as well. Possibly. He doesn't have mana for all well, of either this. Either way, he, yeah, he was just stunned. Like, so after the Overgrowth, he was spinning uh, before that. Then Overgrowth came, and then it lined up perfectly with the Super Nova Seed. Which of course okay, how much mana? He has, he has 900. Manta's 160. Oh, he okay, should he should have, have, have mana. He, he should have mana for everything, actually. Maybe he came in without full mana. Maybe he just got locked down if very nicely. If we by had the incend replay, we could have seen. Yeah, exactly that would have been very there. nice. Actually, that would have been useless because the fight was over. It's only a 10-second. Uh, That's time true. It's a it's over. a very restricted replay feature. <laughs> 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 it's better than nothing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Samel, what's he going with this ultimate orb? It's going to be a sheep stick. Yes, most uh, of I believe Fear was working on a Scotty. I'm not sure what the status on that. AUA did finish the Ags, by the way. It's a wow, he finished the Scotty already. Holy yeah, and geez. has 2k on top of that. Unbelievable. And Roche, what's the timer on Roche? Good old Wepis. All right, we won't know for a couple minutes. And EG, all the time in the world. They have a full Rax bot. They have the melee mid, which is really the only one that matters, unless you're going for Mega Creeps. And <laughs> we're just talking about the ultimate orb. What could it possibly be? It just finishes the Sheep Stick. Man, they are super duper farmed. Yeah, this this tinker is going to give all the control in the world to EG. This is what people were talking about when that E Blade Dagon nerf came in. That tinker is going to go from being just a flat out first phase pick in mini games to being a situational pick where you need to strategize around him and then possibly reinvent the old build with hex. And it's what we've been seeing. We've seen been seeing mainly Bloodstone, Yules, Shivas, and Hex. And then E-Blade Dagon is the late game luxury build, but I wanna say this is a pretty good game of Tinker. And yeah, now you're gonna say, well it's against a support warlock, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. It, it, it doesn't does matter, count. sir. The it warlock is support after all. He's been doing a great job. Yeah. This is still a hero and I'm not surprised to see EG being the ones to pull it out. They have the young talent and I also want to say PPD is a, is a big fan of, of trying new heroes out and, and coming up with new strategies, so... This is probably the player hero or the player team combination that was most likely to try out a Tinker. Yeah, I think PPD is a great captain. He can get salty at times, but is very innovative. 
and willing to try new things. By t at times you mean 20 hours a day. Uh, yeah. So half, he's half, of his, half of his sleep half of his and sleeps. all of the day. That's why Dyer's he's, such, that's why he's so salty. Attack. Half of his dreams are composed of saltiness in general. It just just sets the tone for the next day, you know? So man, and this is the problem. When you have mega cre or when you have super creeps in the lane with a tinker on the enemy team, it's just next to impossible without the right hero composition to go up against that. Is Rabbi a, a blink dagger on Rubik Van score? What do you steal? Overgrowth? Overgrowth is good. Battle Trance, not really. Supernova. Yeah, it's difficult to steal, though. Because he just pops a spell right out of the bat, fire spirits or something like that. Yeah. You have a very short time frame. I think you should be able to do it if you're like spam clicking the egg, you should cast it faster than right, the fire spirit. Rearm is probably the worst spell you can get. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay, here we go. Sonic, Sonic Wave's going to clip too. Here comes the Chaotic Offering, Supernova. Nobody's going to take that out. Upheaval continuing to slow, but Funnick's gonna be the first to die. And Universe, not able to get really any stuns out, but he's doing a ton of damage to Goblack on the support warlock. He's gonna end up dropping to the deck. That's three dead. And EG is gonna take game two in convincing fashion. That's the most finally uses Omni Slash to get the game. <laughs> it's like, yay! Great strategy. They played their lineup well. They got a lot out of the train early on. They secured their Tinker. They secured their Phoenix. Their whole strategy came together with a couple of team fights with Overgrowth. Overgrowth Supernova is just such a long lockdown that it's very easy. Because here's what.